Good morning. Welcome to Mays Manor United Methodist Church. This month we are encouraging you to use your unique gifts to give nice surprises to the people around you. We light this candle as a symbol that God is in the house. And not just our house, but your house too. As we come together this morning, let's begin to worship with song. Good morning, Mays Manor. This is Ron Ritz. Chrissy and I hope you all continue to be well. This morning I would like to begin the service with Take My Life and Let It Be. Take my life and let it be Consecrated, Lord, to Thee Take my moments and my days let them flow in ceaseless praise. Take my hands and let them move at the impulse of thy love. Take my feet and let them be swift and beautiful for thee. Take my voice and sing, always only for my King. Take my lips and let them be filled with messages from Thee. Take my silver and my gold, not a mite would I withhold. Take my intellect Take my will and make it thine, it shall be no longer mine. Take my heart, it is thine own, it shall be thy royal throne. Take my love, my Lord, I pour at thy feet its treasure store. Take myself and I will be ever only all for thee. Over the next few weeks we are inviting you to serve your neighbors. We have set up some nice surprises where you all can use your gifts to serve other people. Last Wednesday, the Zeidner family did Light the Block, where they projected inspirational images onto our building. And we even had our own little fireworks display. This Wednesday, we will have a free outdoor concert at the church at 7 p.m. You can sit in your car or a lawn chair. Everyone needs to stay six feet apart and wear masks anytime you get out of your car. Pastor Ryan will be parking everyone, so please try not to run over him. This month, we are also encouraging everyone to take pictures of yourselves in your favorite superhero clothes because we can all be heroes when we serve each other. Now we want to take a few moments to say hi to everybody. I have my daughter Lily serving as our liturgist. My daughter Eva, as always, is running the show behind the camera. I want to say thanks to the Zeidner family for help with technology and a big thanks to all the people who have worked again to bring the music together for this Sunday. For everyone on Facebook, let's go ahead and say hello to each other by posting a comment, as well as letting us all know who all is watching from your home.
Let's join together in our call to worship. God loves the rich and the poor. God loves the weak and the strong. God loves the healthy and the hurting. Let all people praise the Lord. Let's join together in our opening hymn. is to be a church where people actually live like Jesus and Christ came into this world not to be served but to serve. This morning we're going to uh, interview one of the members of the church who has an alter ego as a superhero uh, so we're going to talk today to Lynn Reed and while she talks about the ways she serves the world she's also going to tell us a little bit about our VBS so at this time we're going to head over to our field reporter. Thanks Ryan. I'm coming to you from our kitchen today, and I'm here with Lynn Reed. Thanks for joining us, Lynn. Oh, nice to see you, Mary Ellen. So the first question is, what could possibly be your hero name? I am Batman. And what did you do before you were a hero, Batman? I grew up with a loving father and mother. My dad was a physician, and we had the best of times. And then how did you become a hero? Well, one night while I was still very young, we all had gone to the movies. When we were walking home, a mugger approached us. Even though my parents tried to cooperate, he shot and killed them. Mm, I'm sorry to hear that. So as a hero, what would you say is your biggest weakness? Well, that was a very sad day in my life, and I became lonely and full of despair at that time. But I didn't realize I could stay that way or I could actually do something so other people might not have to go through the same kind of pain. Okay. So what unique abilities or tools do you use? I don't truly really have superpowers, but God has given me intellect so I could overcome those sad days. I hide my identity by using my bat cave where I have all the equipment and gadgets I need to help others. And how is it that you help people? I fight all kinds of crime with justice. I'm just trying to make our world a better place for all to live in. And really anyone can become a superhero with the gifts and talents that God has given you. Things don't always go the way we have planned, but we have always a choice about what we do. That's very true. 
So I also heard a rumor that you're helping with our virtual VBS. Yes, for our young kids out there, today starts the Rocky Railway Virtual Vacation Bible School. And you can go to sign up at the Maze Manor website. We're going to be talking about when life sometimes gets tough for you. And then that's when Jesus' power will pull you through those hard times. Be sure to check it out. Great. Well, thanks so much for your time today, Batman. And now back to you, Ryan. Thank you, Mary Ellen, for that report, and stay safe out there. Let's all serve our neighbors in all that we do. This morning, our children's prayer will be led by Lily Grace. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you for blessing us with warm weather, and I pray that you keep all of your children safe. All God's children say, Amen. At this time, let's take a few moments to collect the prayers of the people. You can type your prayers into the comments on Facebook, but please do not give anyone's last name for privacy reasons. Let's take some time to think about the stories we've been seeing in the news, the people who we know who are in some special need of God's grace, and the good things that we have been receiving, the blessings that God have given us. Let's pray. God, we give thanks to you for your presence with us during this last week and throughout our lives. We thank you for the people who have shown us kindness. We thank you for the people who have offered us the things that we need to be able to continue to put one foot in front of the other as we make our way through this world. As we come together this morning, we lift up our prayers uh, regarding all of the things that raise our anxieties and our fears. We lift up prayers for all people who are in need of your healing touch on their lives. And we pray for your Holy Spirit to come and to enter into our lives so that you can continue to guide us and direct us, that we can work together to be your church and to be faithful to our calling, to serve your world and build your kingdom. These things we ask in the name of Christ, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. And now the written word will be read by our lay leader, Erica. Good morning, Maze Manor. Your scripture today is from Matthew 4, verses 18 to 22. As he walked by the Sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers, Simon, who is called Peter and Andrew, his brother, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. And he said to them, follow me and I will make you fish for people. Immediately they left their nets and followed him. As he went from there, he saw two other brothers, James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John in a boat with their father Zebedee, mending their nets. And he called to them. Immediately they left the boat and their father and followed him. The word of God for the people of God. At this time, we will be receiving our tithes and offerings. We want to thank everyone for continuing to support the church's mission during these few months, and we want to encourage you to continue to, to give. There are a couple of different ways you can do this. One is by going online to give at mazemanorumc.org slash give, or you can take these next few moments to go ahead and write your checks and get them in the envelope to mail during our offering song.
The Word of God is alive and active among us. Amen? For the last several months, I have had a feeling of powerlessness. I will confess that for me, it has been painful to watch all of the suffering around me. I watched the pandemic, and I have never seen anything like it on U.S. soil. I watch the people who don't seem to care, and I do not understand how they are so quick to disregard the lives of other people for whom Christ has died. I watch the country tear itself apart at the seams, and I stand in awe at how we seem to make everything a political discussion, including the value of human life. I know it is not all bad, and I know that there are many people out there who would like to be able to do things to help, but pr a problem like this is so big that it would be overwhelming for most people. And that's one of the reasons why this month we have decided to concentrate our worship around the idea of nice surprises that you can do to help other people. The reason that we are doing that is because I believe that even now, God is calling you to use your unique gifts to serve. In our Bible story today, we are told about the call of the first disciples. And this story takes place at the very beginning when Jesus has just begun to carry out his call to serve. And then one of the very first things that he does is he begins to call other people to serve with him. So let's take a few moments to read between the lines of Matthew chapter 4 verses 18 through 22 begins by saying, As Jesus walked by the Sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers, Simon, who is called Peter, and Andrew, his brother, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. Now, fishermen were not powerful people. They would have been working class folks. At, at, at this time, fishermen would have tended to uh, work early in the morning and late into the night. Now, th there were a couple of different ways that they could sell their catches. Uh, that they, they could pay taxes uh, to a tax collector, and, and the taxes were usually pretty high in exchange for selling them themselves. Or they could sell them to a middle person who would then turn around and sell them. But, but either way that they went, it tended to be that the fishermen who did most of the work did not get to keep most of the money. So these were people who were not the people who you would normally expect to be heroes. They, they, they would have been considered too weak for that. The story goes on to say that Jesus said to them, follow me and I will make you fish for people. The, the word to follow is one of the most important words in the New Testament, and it, it means more than just walking behind. It, it means seeking to follow in the way of life of a person who is a teacher or a spiritual leader. In the New Testament, the, the word that's used that we translate follow here is only used in relationship to Jesus. So Jesus is the only person that they are told to follow. And this is the first time that Matthew uses the word to follow. So that means that these fishermen are going to become the very first followers of Jesus, and they're going to go on to become some of the heroes of the New Testament who then uh, begin to work towards founding the church that we are a part of today. This phrase, fish for people, uh, used to be translated fish for men, but uh, now it's, it's often translated as fish for people, and that's probably more true to the intent of it since uh, I believe the understanding is that uh, women should be following Jesus, too. In the next verse, we are told that immediately they left their nets and followed him. Now, these men had to think that they were just powerless 
fishermen, and it would have been easy for them to get caught in the trap of fears. It would have been easy for them to get caught in the trap of failures. It would have been easy for them to get caught in the trap of feelings of powerlessness. But when Jesus says that he can make them fish for people, he takes this thing that they already know how to do and are good at, which is fishing, and basically he says, we're going to take that and we're going to translate that in to how you can catch people and get them caught up in the kingdom of God. And as he does this, they drop their nets and they go. Then the same basic thing happens again in verses 21 through 22. It says, as Jesus went from there, he saw two other brothers, James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John, in the boat with their father, Zebedee, mending their nets. And he called them. Immediately, they left the boat and their father and followed him. Now, the key verse that I want to concentrate on this morning is verse 20, which says, immediately they left their nets and followed him. Now, I think there are a lot of things in this story um, that we can draw out to think about how they relate to us today. The first is that the fishermen would have felt powerless in the world. But Jesus called them to serve with him. Now, they must have had thoughts along the lines of, I am just a fisherman. Yet, as the story goes on in the gospel, those fishermen became heroes, and the reason that they did is because they dropped their nets and went. This morning, I want to suggest that now is the time to follow Jesus. I think that there are a lot of people out there who, like me in these recent months, have had a feeling of powerlessness. And they look around at all the things that are going on and they wonder, what could I possibly do to help? But Jesus calls us to serve with him. And in the United Methodist Church, when we talk about that, we refer to it as what we call the ministry of all Christians. And when we write about this in our book of discipline, we say, lay members of the United Methodist Church are by history and calling active advocates of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And lay members would be people who are not clergy. So what that means is everybody in the church has this calling to serve with Jesus. And that means that no one gets to say, I am just. No one gets to say, I am just a fisherman. I am just a cook. I am just a small business owner. I am just a retired teacher. Or I am just a pastor. We all have the power to help. Now, if you want to think about this in terms of uh, a hero story, uh, one of the heroes that I think speaks to this well is, is the, the popular stories of Spider-Man. In the story of Spider-Man, there is a, a person who was weak and powerless. And I think a lot of people can relate to that. Now, he was good at technology, and some people can relate to that. And then he goes on to get bitten by a radioactive spider that gives him superpowers, which, granted, not as many people can relate to. But then after he gets all of these powers, um, he begins to feel this uh, burden of responsibility to use those powers to do good things in the world. And, and he explains this with a phrase that, is, that, that, that has become kind of synonymous with the Spider-Man franchise. Um, he says, you know, since he has these powers, he has to do something with them because with great power comes great responsibility. And, and that really is, is a good lesson for people because it can play out to people in all kinds of different walks of life, even if you have never been bitten by a radioactive spider. You know, the lesson would be, with great power comes great responsibility, with some power comes some responsibility, with a little bit of power comes a little bit of responsibility. But we all have things that we can do to help. So that means that you can be a hero. You can be a hero by using the powers that you have. So the nice surprises that we are talking about this July are little ways that you can use your gifts to serve the people 
around you. Now, our first nice surprise that I want to lift up this week was the Light the Block ministry event that we had this past Wednesday. The idea for this ministry came from the fact that right now we wanted to have a way for the church just to send some light into the community around us. While I was thinking about that, I saw a post on Facebook from Andy Zeidner, who's one of the members of the church, where he was talking about a thing he was working on where he could project images onto the outside of his house. So I contacted Andy and I asked him if he would be willing to do that in, at, at a time when people from the church could come and watch. And he said sure and then he, he ultimately asked if we could do it on the church instead of his house and I said absolutely that'd be great. Um, he said we could do it but we would have to do it uh, fairly late. He said the best time to view it would be between 9 p.m. and midnight or even you know 10 o'clock to midnight would even work better because then it's completely dark outside. I had a little bit of misgivings about that because that's a good hour past my bedtime, but I decided that it would probably be worth it. So, so, so we set that up and this past Wednesday I drank some caffeine and I kept myself busy and active and I, I drove down to the church a little after 10 to see it. When I got there I saw Andy with his family, all of whom had pitched in to get the ministry put together. And it was really neat to see the church projecting our mission statement onto the side of the building facing the houses behind it, encouraging people to live like Jesus, to follow Christ. The display also had some really neat light show effects that drew attention and, and it got people to come out to take a look at everything else. And the whole thing was so cool that even Bigfoot came out of hiding to stop by and see. If 10 p.m. is also past your bedtime and you were not able to stay up and go out late enough to see the Light the Block ministry in person, uh, we did film it and we plan to make that available to people online so you can still see all of the displays. And I want to take a moment right now to thank Andy and Max and their family for putting this together. Now I am sure that there were many details and obstacles that they could have allowed themselves to get caught up on that could have stopped them from doing it, but they dropped their nets and went. So drop your nets and go. I want to encourage all of you today to ask yourselves the questions. What are you good at? What do you know how to do? What is a nice surprise that you can do for someone else? How can you light up your neighbor's day? How can God use your gifts to serve? God is calling you to use your unique gifts to serve. Now, I am sure that some of you also have a feeling of powerlessness. But Jesus calls us to serve with him. So no one gets to say, I am just whatever it is you happen to be. And it does not matter who you are, you can be a hero. All you need to do is drop your nets and go. Put down all the things that trap you. Put down all the things you get caught up on. Put down your fears, put down your failures, put down your feelings of powerlessness. Drop your nets and go. Let's pray. God, in the midst of this world that we live in, with all of the things that are going on around us, we hear your call to serve. Even though there are times when we wonder if we have the power that it takes to really make a difference in your world, we see in the scriptures, in the stories of Jesus, and the stories of the first disciples, and time and again in the stories of the people who we meet in our lives who are examples of faith to us, that you call people and that you give us gifts so that we can reach out to serve the people around us. So give us the strength and give us the confidence to drop our nets and go out into this world to serve. 
These things we ask in the name of Christ, and all God's people say, Amen. Let's celebrate the God who calls us to serve with a song. Now let us trust in God, let us live like Jesus, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, let us drop our nets and go. Let's all jump on Facebook to say goodbye to each other, and this Wednesday you can learn more about the church concert in The Jesus Show, and then go check it out at 7 p.m. And remember, the church is not a building, the church is the people. So even though our building is partially closed, the church is always open. Amen.